Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, We're going to talk about many IG502. So let's get started. So a little introduction to myself. Uh, my name is Luis. I'm uh, in charge of the sales, uh, many in Euro European markets. And today, together with my colleague Zila, uh, we are going to talk about uh, our new edge computing gateway IG502. Here is what we are uh, going to talk about today. Uh, first, starting with a little introduction to in-hand networks. Then we can discuss the backgrounds of why edge computing gateway is needed. And then my colleague Zilla is going to go through the details of IG502 features and use cases. I will also show you a selection guide and our roadmap for our new edge computing products. At last, let's watch a demonstration video of how to configure IG502. Okay, in hand, was founded in 2001, and we just celebrated our 20th anniversary last, last month. Uh, over the past 20 years, uh, we have grown to be one of the largest manufacturers of industrial communication products. GE Healthcare became our customer since 2005, and now we are a supplier to GE Healthcare global wise. We are also a supplier to the state grid of China where we have over 1 million modems in operation. In the past five years, uh, we had several su successful projects with Siemens, Young, and RWE in the European markets, which brought us to a even higher standard. <laughs> uh, in 2020, we officially moved into our new 120K square feet uh, factory in Jiaxin, which is very close to Shanghai city. Also last year, Inhand became listed on the SSE star markets, the China's equivalent of NASDAQ. With headquarters in Beijing, uh, we have sales team in Europe and in North America. In 2020, we have set up a new office in Canada as well. Uh, no doubt, 2020 has been a challenging year for everyone with the pandemic. However, we worked hard and found our way to, to grow still. We have, <laughs> we had more people join in-hand team. Uh, right now we have over 350 full-time employees and our yearly revenue increased by around 24% last year. All of our products and production facilities work within an ISO 9000 regime and all the products have the uh, appro appropriate certifications for the territory they are designed for, including CE, FCC, ROHS, and e-marking for our uh, vehicle-based products. And we back up our products with great tech support and uh, uh, three-year warranty. You know, um, Inhand's main business line is cellular communication products. We offer a wide range of products from basic cellular modems to high-end edge computing gateways, uh, including IG502, which is our main topic today. To support the hardware, we come up with two software platforms, InConnect, which enables remote connection to machines. And uh, well, Device Manager is a free software for customers to remotely manage in-hand devices. Besides, uh, we offer several end-to-end -end solutions, including Smart Grid Fault Detect System, uh, Smart ATM Management, and Smart uh, Fleet Management. Before we go further, um, Let's have a quick comparison between a router and a gateway. Uh, in simple words, a router is a networking layer system that manages and forwards data packets to computer networks. The, the key word here is routing. A typical router would have features like ethernet, VPN, firewalls, and uh, dynamic routing. 
As for a gateway, it is more like a translator for field devices, which gathers data via one protocol and converts to another. The key word here is being a gate. A typical edge computing gateway would be able to um, compatible with development platform, uh, for example, Python. Uh, it supports IoT clouds, and it should also have options for uh, I/O ports. So, why IoT edge computing gateway is needed? The reason is quite obvious. First, there has been an explosive growth of IoT devices. I put some numbers here. As you can see, according to research conducted by McKinsey, currently there are more than 10 billion active IoT devices. Every second, there are 127 IoT devices being connected to internet for the first time. It's estimated that the number of active IoT devices will surpass 25 billion in the year of 2030. Secondly, massive data constantly generated from everywhere. The amount of data generated by IoT devices is ex expected to reach 73.1 zettabytes by the year of 2025. To give you an idea about the, the units, the zettabytes, one zettabyte equals to one billion terabytes and one trillion gigabytes. If we were to process all the data on the cloud side, it would be too much pressure. So the best way moving forward is to assign the computing tasks uh, to IoT devices on the edge. According to IDC, the International Data Corporation, it was predicted that uh, by the year of 2023, over 50% of new enterprise IT infrastructure de de deployed will be at the edge rather than the uh, corporation data centers. People often get asked what is really happening on the edge computing? Uh, what are the benefits? Well, simply speaking, data is collected, sorted, and processed locally close to the data source. Uh, this is possible because devices are getting more and more powerful, uh, meaning they can handle more data uh, processing tasks. In other words, the device no longer has to send every little piece of data, whether it's useful or not, to the central cloud. As the data is more structured and the data amount is reduced, edge computing is actually saving bandwidth and therefore reducing latency. For some critical application where real-time decision needs to be made, such as uh, self-driving cars, every milliseconds will matter. Another benefit here is uh, security. When you distribute your data analysis tools across the enterprise, you distribute the risks as well. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna hand over to my colleague Zilla. Uh, she will explain more about the product itself. Hi everyone, I'm Zilla, tech support at Inha Networks. I'm gonna spend a few moments to introduce you to our edge computing gateway in Gateway 502. First, let's look at the common features. Having powerful edge computing capability and Python-based platform for custom development, supporting multiple industrial protocols, including Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, Ethernet IP, ISO on TCP, and OPC UA, standard and standard MQTT IoT clouds like Azure and AWS. It comes with wired and cellular connection that supporting dual SIM, optical Wi-Fi and GPS, input output, and Bluetooth. Let's turn our attention on the reliability. The IG502 supports mutual failover between wired Wi-Fi and cellular connection, keeping always online. Dual SIM is to provide failover once the data is used up on one of the SIM cards. Embedded with watchdog and multi-layer link detection mechanisms, IG502 offers you automatic recover from the operation failure. 
The Edge Computing Gateway has intelligent data collection and processing capability and is compatible with popular industrial field bus protocols like we've mentioned before, Mode bus TCP, Mode bus RTU, Ethernet IP, ISO on TCP, OPC UA client. And we've been improving. It's capable of being OPC UA server now. The Edge Computing Gateway supports the connection to major IoT cloud platform like Azure and AWS via MQTT. And in hand, RDT has developed an app, Device Supervisor Agent, that provides you with a visual intel interface. This app helps users to collect data of various industrial protocols and pro progress the data locally. The processed data is uploaded to the cloud platform only with sample configuration. You may ask, how does the device supervisor agent work inside? First, the data from PLCs or other field devices goes to collection driver. Then the quick function will process the data. Finally, cloud agent service will hand it over to the cloud platform like AWS. These are for public protocols like Modbus, Ethernet IP. So if you have the requirement on the private protocols to collect the data, you can email us to have for communication. What enables the powerful edge computing capabilities? On the hardware side, IGFile 2 is embedded with the ARM Cortex-A8 processor and 512 megabits RAM, 8 gigabits flash. When it comes to the software, it's Python programmable for your custom development. But what you can do with the Python uh, secondary development environment? It offers more flexibility and you can develop based on your own business. Some logic can be done locally on the gateway so that you save the cost to transfer it to the cloud to handle. You can also run several applications in the meantime. IPsec and OpenVPN are both supported by IGFile 2. It connects your field devices to your center and the secure VPN tunnel prevents from external attacks. It has extensive interfaces to faster Ethernet ports, dual SIM ports, dual serial ports, one RS-28232 and one RS-485, eight pins digital input and output, GPS, 4G, Wi-Fi along with Bluetooth. Therefore, multiple devices can be connected to IG502. And it supports USB flash disk and Microsoft SD card to extend the storage. Let's look closer at the applications. We work with our customer Istem, who owns welding robots that are normally used in the process of automotive production lines. Uh, both the wielder and the robots are connected to a controller that is connected to the IG502 via Ethernet port. And the IG502 will collect the OPC UA data every 100 or 200 milliseconds. The data will be processed on the gateway before sent to the AWS cloud. The 4G connection ensures the high-speed communication between the gateway and their cloud server. The reported data on the cloud can be used to analyze the consumption of the mantle. This kind of application can also be used in sorting industry, 4G industry, spring industry, tool processing, palletizing, and handling industry. And this application for air compressors is similar to the last one for wielding robots. But the differences are that the controller is connected to RS-485. So the industrial protocol is moved by SRTU. Since the air compressor is distributed in different locations, an IG502 that provide internet connection would also be hard to manage it 
Nonetheless, IG502 is benefit from our free service device manager that can centrally manage all the in-hand routers and gateways. The business data is sent to AWS, but you can also choose the third party as long as it's a standard MQTT platform. The IVD devices like blood analyzers can connect the two IG502 via the LAN ports, and there are local server in the LAN also. IG502 will connect the operation status and use the 4G to connect with the cloud. So that is capable of real-time monitoring and preventive maintenance in the cloud. There are local server in the LAN and it can receive the data from IVD devices. It's price and programmable, so we can also do data filtering, which is very useful for the cloud to calculate how many samples and the samples and the reagents are consumed. In this salvage disposal works, PLCs, no matter ADB or Siemens, can talk to IG502, and IP camera can also be connected to the gateway. And the gateway reports the real-time operation status as well as the video to the cloud so that you can do the online monitoring, receive the fault alarm once the field devices is done, ensuring the good water, water quality and security of the hydraulic pressure. Actually, this can not only be used in the uh, disposal site, but also the water supply site. The concept of this, com uh, this application is pretty much like the last one. The PLCs are integrated in the heat pumps, water meter, thermometers. The status of the water source heat pumps are, connected, are co collected by the IG502 and sent to the cloud in real time via MQTT. And the status of the factory temperature will trigger the air source heat pumps once they reach in the threshold. The field devices and IG502 are added on our in-connect service. You may know it's a cloud platform that enables downloading and uploading the PLC programs remotely. That's all about the applications. I will hand over to Luis. Okay, um, thank you, Zila. Um, okay, let's moving forward. Uh, selection guide. <coughs> Here is the um, uh, chart showing the current um, edge computing products we have. Uh, IG902, you may consider it as um, high end aging edge computing gateways. And uh, the new, newly launched IG502, uh, which can be seen uh, cost effective uh, edge computing gateways. On this chart, you can see there are some differences. Uh, first, IG902 supports uh, high-speed Ethernet ports. Um, uh, and the second is, while uh, IG502 only supports Python programming, uh, and IG902 supports both Python and Docker container, so it will allows you to um, use some other programming languages. Also, um, both of the two models, they support uh, mainstream IoT clouds, such as uh, AWS and Azure. However, IG902 supports um, the edge computing deploying clouds, such as uh, AWS Greengrass, uh, Azure IoT Edge, while IG502, they, they, it doesn't support those two. And the other difference is the hardware features. Uh, for example, as a uh, RAM. Here on this picture, uh, we're showing you the installation methods. The most common way to install IG502 would be DIN rail. And as for wall mounting, uh, there are two methods. Um, as, far, as far as the uh, um, wall mounting lugs, it can be put, put uh, either on the back or on the side. So you can see there are our wall mounting methods A and wall mounting method B.
If you have any questions, you can uh, type it in the chat box. Okay, all right. On this slide, we are show, showing you the accessories for IG502. Uh, by standard, it will come with um, uh, Ethernet cable, just as uh, the same as our other products. And power adapter is optional. You need to um, order separately based on which, which region you are deploying this unit. And also uh, for antennas, if, for, for example, if it's a Wi-Fi version, it will come with the Wi-Fi antenna. The same goes for uh, 4G and the GPS. Also, let's talk about uh, packaging. IG502 used the same packaging as our um, uh, router IR615. A uh, carton box can hold 12 pieces of IG502. You can see the dimensions in the picture. A standard packaging, I mean the standard uh, paper box, it can hold one piece of IG502 and all, including all the uh, accessories mentioned the last page. Okay, um, here I want to discuss a little further about uh, what new IG uh, edge computing gateways uh, we're going to launch. So as you can see from last year, we launched the high-end IG902. Uh, right now we are launching IG502. So we planned in the later this year, uh, across uh, to the end of this year, uh, we plan to launch IG974, which is a high-end 5G uh, IoT edge gateway. Uh, it, it will have better performance hardware. Uh, it will support greater bandwidth, uh, more powerful AI, and uh, with possibilities to implement machine vision. Also, we plan to launch um, edge computer, EC500. It will come with um, ARM architecture with a Linux Debian. Okay, so um, now let's work together watch a demo video about um, how to configure uh, IG502 with three easy steps. So I'm gonna share uh, my, this video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to collect and upload the mobile bus data to AWS. Preparation, IG502 device and the PC, the mobile bus TCP simulator or mobile bus TCP device. This video takes mobile bus simulator as example. The AWS account. Part one, login and check. Install the SIM, attach antennas and then power it down using Ethernet cable to connect the LAN port of Gateway and the PC. Logging to the Gateway, check the firmware version, making sure the Gateway has access to the Internet. Check the SDK version, device supervisor agent version. Part 2, mode bus data acquisition and alarm configuration. Firstly, run the Modbus simulator on your PC. Select the protocol Modbus TCP. Set up the Modbus communication parameters. Port is 502. Click OK. Double click to add the decimal value at 40001. Set it as 10. Go to the web configuration page of EngageWay, making sure the Python engine is on and the device supervisor agent is running. Navigate to device list. Click the button to create a new device. Give it a name. Select Modbus TCP. The IP address of the Modbus device now is one PC. Set the port 502 as in the Modbus simulator. Keep the other parameters default. 
then click to add a variable. Variable name, data1. Set the register address from the Modbus simulator such as 40001. Select the data type word. Give it a read and write privilege. Set it in real-time mode. And keep the other items at the default settings. Compare the value locked by the gateway with the one in the Modbus simulator. See if they are the same. Navigate to Alarm. Add an alarm strategy. Fill in a lane and select a group. Use existing variable. Apply it on the device 1 and data 1. Set the alarm condition greater than 10 and less than 20. Add description. Click confirm to save the alarm strategy. Part 3. Connect to AWS IoT. Go to AWS Free Tier. Sign in to the console. Fill in your credentials. Click Sign in. Select IoT Core. Go to Manage Things. Click Create. Create a single thing. Give your thing a name. For example, Test123. Then Next. One click certificate creation is recommended. Download the certificate for thing, private key. And you also have to download the root CA for AWS IoT. We recommend class 3. Then switch back to the tab to active. When it shows you success, click down. You can now see it in your things list. Go to secure policies. One click to create a policy. Give the policy a name. For example, test123. Define the type of the action that can be performed in the bio resource. IoT, the column, the asterisk. Type in the resource, the asterisk. Select Allow. Create. Now you will successfully create the policy. Go to Secure, Certificates. Edit the certificate that you've just created. Attach policy. Select the policy that we've just created, test123. Click Attach, then click Attach Thing. Select the one that we've just created, Attach. The announcement bar shows we've successfully attached them. Part 4. Publish and subscribe messages to AWS. Go to Device Supervisor, Cloud. Enable Cloud Service. Select Type, AWS IoT. Endpoint Type, AWS IoT Cloud Service. Copy the endpoint from AWS IoT Core settings. Test it. Import the certificate for thing. Private key. And root we'll CA we created on AWS. Know that when we are using the class 3, we have to delete dash ATS in the endpoint. Leave the advanced settings as default. Submit. We can now see the cloud status is connected. Create a publication topic for real-time data. Give it a name and topic. QS1, collect type, default group. Submit. Then create another publication topic for the alert. Upload 2, test 2, QS1. Warning type and group. Submit. Create a subscription topic, for example, download. Change the debug to info. Submit. Go to AWS test, MQTT test client. Subscribe to the topics that we just published on Gateway. This topic is for uploading the data logged by the Gateway. We can see the received raw data is as the same as the one locked by the gateway. Test 2 is for warning, but now there is no alarm. Go to in gateway configuration page, device list. Modify the value to 15. Wait for a moment for it to take effect. Check the real-time alarms. It was triggered by the value 15. Go to AWS IoT. It also received the alarm synchronized by the gateway. Back to Edge Computing Python Engine. Open the log. Go to AWS IoT. 
publish to the topic that we just subscribed on the gateway. Then we can see on the log page of the gateway, you received the message published from AWS. Up to now, we've completed Modbus TCP data acquisition, publish and subscribe data to AWS. Okay, thank you for watching this demo video with us. And now, um, if you have any questions, please um, use this QA box and type your question there. It will help us to see uh, which one is answered and which one is not. So if you have any questions, feel, feel free to ask. And later on, if you have any needs, uh, you can send information, your um, uh, questions to our emails. So someone asked if um, IG502 has to be, has to work with a, a cloud platform. No, uh, it can work, uh, I mean, locally without a, uh, a cloud. And someone um, wants a written step-by-step -step guide to this video. And uh, we will put a link here. And from this link, from this site, you will see uh, I'm writing words how to configure. And if you want to watch this video again, we put up a up, uploaded this video to YouTube. I will share this uh, link in the chat box. Yeah, I got asked, do we have a central management tool for mass deployments? Yes, as we mentioned in the webinar, we have a free tool called uh, Device Manager, and you can manage the all the in-hand products uh, remotely, like uh, um, batch upgrades or uh, configure. How many maximum nodes, um, maximum number of nodes supported in the tool in Device Manager? Uh, I think it's 4,000. 4, Another question, does uh, IG502 have voice capabilities? Um, no, it does not support uh, voice capability. Yeah, both, both IG502 and IG902, they don't support voice capabilities. Please, if you have any questions, uh, type it in the QA. And uh, if you don't get an answer in the uh, webinar, we will uh, answer you back after this session. Another question asked, um, does IG502 allows Different user login, yes, it, it supports. And another question, uh, what is IG902 full feature list price? Um, you know, this really depends on which region. We have uh, different versions. Uh, a brief idea, it will be, the full feature version will be around uh, 450 uh, US dollars. Uh, that's the list price on our uh, uh, store. But um, if you have, I mean, uh, specific project needs, welcome to discuss with us. Another question asked, is it possible to, <clears throat> to have a, a data visualiz visualization on uh, IG502? Uh, no, we collect data, we uh, process it and we can upload it. But right now, uh, local visualization is not yet um, realized. Another question, <clears throat> is it possible to, um, for IG502 and IG902 to send uh, SMS on Modbus read? Uh, 
yes, we are working on it and we will implement this feature in the near future. Question, is there um, remote access av available from smartphone? Yes, we, uh, you can use our device manager and in-connect service. Uh, they, it have, uh, they have uh, smartphone applications. A question asked to when can we expect IEC 101 and IEC 104 support? We expect to uh, implement this feature um, at the end of August. And is it IG502 useful in other fields uh, besides industry? Yes. I think we have shown some of the use cases uh, in, during the webinar. It's not, it cannot only be used in the industry, but also some other um, uh, market segments. Does it support remote reset? Yes, it supports. Can we use uh, can we use for private clouds other than um, AWS? Yes, uh, this is possible, but it require a little bit of um, uh, development. But yes, it's possible. Yes, um, this webinar and uh, discussion is recorded, and uh, we'll share it later together with our uh, feedback to all the questions. A general question, what value, I mean, what value can IG502 bring to industrial customers? Well, um, uh, this is, uh, I mean, we, we introduced this in the webinar. Uh, it's it kind of, this, you reduce the risks because you uh, uh, distribute all the uh, data among um, all across the enterprise. And also it reduce the bandwidth because the data amount is reduced. And also it will reduce the maintenance cost because as we mentioned, the, the, there is a uh, uh, preventive maintenance. So, uh, and reduce the downtime for industrial customers. Okay, um, I think it's about time and to wrap it up. And uh, so I'm showing the email address again. Uh, if you have any further questions, inquiries, uh, needs, please feel free to send us emails and we'll get back to you. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Thank you to, um, uh, <clears throat> so have a nice day. Bye-bye.